A big thank you to Omtech for sponsoring this video and supporting this channel. Computer-controlled woodworking is here to stay according to recent market research. The industry just continues to grow year over year, despite a large group of people saying it's not proper woodworking. In my opinion, it allows people to focus on design rather than technical skill, which is ultimately a net positive, but that's a topic for another day. The kind of growth we're seeing is very indicative of an industry that's still quite young, but it's coming at a time when we have new, incredibly powerful tools for finding out information on just about anything. With that in mind, consider this video a cautionary tale that I haven't seen anyone else talking about. But stick with me because I do believe there's light at the end of the tunnel. Light at the end of the tunnel, like a light coming through a laser tube. Let's just get on with the video. Let's go back to August, around three months ago. I just finished signing a content deal with Omtech and my new Turbo 756 60 watt CO2 laser was about to be delivered. But before that, I've got to clean up this spot behind me because this is where it's going. I've been collecting wood over the years, just different species, small pieces, just from a, like a collecting perspective. And right here, I've got a piece of hewn pine. Picked this up at Wood Dust 23. Oh, it's got such a cool smell. Oh, look at this. So this was a project that I lost uh, last year sometime. Um, it was going to be like a trophy stand for a very, very big franchise here in Townsville. And when I told him the price to make this, he essentially ran as fast as he could. How good it is in hindsight, because I was gutted at the time to lose that job. But here I am over a year later, and business is good. So according to the specifications on the website, this unit is around 1.2 meters long and about eight to 900 millimeters tall. So I've marked that out here. That's where it's gonna go. It's roughly the height that it's gonna be. And the reason I've done this is because this slab that I'm on is terrible. It is just all over the show in terms of its height. If I use this 1.2 meter level, that's the height difference. We're looking at about 30 millimeters across that span. That's a pretty big difference and I don't want to just rely on the feet to be able to take that up. But if I look at the website and what the feet look like, I reckon I won't need a long strip to sit that on. I might just be able to do it on points. So, and that means I can just roll the machine in as it is now and then spend some time afterwards lifting it up and making sure that it's perfectly level. I just got a call from the freight company. They are dropping the laser off a day early. Um, good thing I got that spot cleaned up. Now the challenge is gonna to be to get it into the workshop. This thing weighs 100 kilos on the pallet and I don't think they're gonna be able to drop it into the workshop because I've got some dirt road going in. But uh, I'll see if I can twist the driver's arm. And while that's going on, let me explain why I've decided to add a laser to the business. Over the last year, I've had a lot of requests from clients who want to personalize the furniture that I make. It's been great that I can just go over to Dan and ask him to do the lasering or engraving that I need, but it's clearly a part of the business that I'm in. And the second thing is that having a laser allows you to tap into a low cost, high volume niche in the industry. Up until now, I've been relying on selling a $3,000 vanity. There's a lot of profit in that, but it's for a very select customer who wants maybe a large piece of furniture or they're building a new home. But with a laser, you can batch out small, low cost items and still make it profitable which opens up a whole range of new clients. So over the coming videos, I'm gonna be incorporating the laser and the work that this laser is doing a lot more. And I'm gonna be trying to actively find new niches that I can try and tap into. Well, that's some good news. The driver managed to get it all the way in to the concrete. That's one hurdle done. Here's a quick run through of the features of this machine. It's a 60 watt CO2 laser. The processing area is 700 millimeters by 500 millimeters, and it's got a 600 millimeter per second max engraving speed. When I was approached by Omtech, I jumped at the opportunity because I'd heard a lot of good things about their machines. Off the pallet in one piece, that's good, but now is the real, ooh, the real challenge. I have a standard single entry door into the workshop and I don't mind taking off the door stops on either end. 
I'll even take off the door if I have to. Past that, we get the jam, and then it's onto the stud, which I really don't want to have to take off because that's been anchored into the car, into the bricks. I've done a measurement that comes in at 87, which is substantially less, but then you get this handle, which obviously folds down, which is good, and then you've got this port at the back. So it should fit, but with those little extra bits, there's a water pipe here as well. Hopefully that's not gonna get in the way. That is the gap. That is the gap on either side. Yay. This isn't gonna fit. Damn it. You can see this little handle thing is gonna contact the door stop. That's all right. I can take one of the door, door stops off. That's not the end of the world. Take apart my entire door. So stoked! Look at that, eh? The door stop is back in place. The laser's in place. I'm a very happy man. I'm gonna slow things down now because I need to set this machine up and it's gonna take a bit of time because I've never done it before. But more importantly, I'm not gonna put those feet down yet because I don't know what sort of space I need behind it or around it for all of the plumbing to go. At this point, I was stoked. Everything was going to plan. Except for the fact that I couldn't get the thing to fire it later. And this is where the title of this video comes in. It has been a while since I got the laser into the workshop. Um, let me catch you up on what's happened. It was around five weeks ago that I got this in and installed. I got the water set up, the fume extractor set up, and then I went to do the first test run of it and the laser wasn't cutting. I got onto Dan from Riverside Woodworks and he gave me some advice, but none of that worked. So I then went to Omtech support and through a couple of emails back and forth, we figured out that unfortunately, the laser was broken. The next step was to get this broken tube removed and replaced with a new one. Unfortunately, that whole process took way longer than I'd hoped at five weeks, but here we are today, finally, with the new laser ready to be installed. I do have to give credit where credit's due. Omtech support were fantastic with their communication back and forth. They never left me in the dark, which is great, and I appreciate that. However, I would have hoped that this replacement would have been here a bit quicker, a bit sooner. Um, and I think if you're going to operate a, a business with this machinery, you need to have replacement parts a little more at hand. And for a bit of context, the delay on this replacement part was a customs issue coming into Australia. So while I can't pin the blame on Omtec, and they were fantastic with regular updates, it's also not right that the customer suffers. But this is a perfect example of an operational bottleneck that probably hasn't happened before. But now that it has, they can go back, review and improve, and hopefully it doesn't happen to the next customer. It's all part of a new industry trying to work within legacy processes. I got the new laser tube installed, did a test fire, and I was back in business. It's now firing, I did a test pulse and I can see it's actually working, which is great. So now I've got Dan from Riverside Woodworks coming around in about 10 minutes or so to actually help me figure out how to use this thing. Dan just left and I now have a much better understanding of what's going on and uh, it's also highlighted how <laughs> how little I knew about how this machine works. I'm also surprised by how much information we could find using ChatGPT. I feel like that's gonna be a big part of my future with this machine. And that really sums up my experience so far. The machine is great, it feels well built, and it's doing everything I've asked of it. But everything around it, the things you take for granted as a beginner, those are still catching up. Some examples of that are, once you set up the machine, there's no real clear next step. So the manual is extremely thorough. It goes through every single function, why and, and how it works, but there's nothing to indicate what you do after that. There's no real world examples. I think the issue is that these kinds of lasers have moved out of the industrial sector into the residential environment so quickly 
that there's a lot of knowledge that's assumed along the way. The industry hasn't had a lot of time yet to properly understand how a novice thinks. Secondly, as part of the diagnosing process with the busted laser tube, I was opening up this machine and fiddling around with some pretty high voltage. At one point, I reconnected the high voltage wire but didn't use enough insulation and when I went to test fire the laser, it was arcing between that line and the body of the machine. Uh, test button. Uh... I have a basic understanding of how electrical circuits work, so I felt quite confident going through the diagnosing process. But if you didn't have that background, I reckon you'd feel pretty overwhelmed by this. And unlike traditional industrial machines, say in the woodworking field with maybe a thicknesser or a jointer, that process is mechanical, so we naturally understand what's going on. This is all new. This is a completely foreign kind of tech for a lot of people. And finally, this. This little piece of acrylic is used to focus the laser. I watched a video on how to use it, but I just kept coming up with absolutely scorched timber. The problem was that I was using the wrong edge. I felt pretty silly afterwards, but there's nothing on this to indicate which edge I should be using. I can feel the whole laser industry collectively slapping their foreheads, but you don't know what you don't know. So in closing, should you get a laser? Absolutely, I cannot recommend it enough. I've had so much fun with this machine now that I've got the basics under my belt and I'm starting to think like the software is designed to be used. But keep in mind that there is a steep learning curve and you may need to step outside of traditional methods for finding that information. I've joined a few online laser communities and there's so much information out there, you just need to find it. And if you need an answer to a very specific question, ChatGPT should be able to get you there. If you're interested in getting yourself one of these Omtech lasers, I have an affiliate link in the description down below. You can go ahead and use my code ROBINLEWISMAKES to get 4% off all machines on Omtech Australia, excluding accessories. If you have any questions about Omtech machines, let me know in the comments down below. I'd be happy to answer them. And thanks again to Omtech for supporting me and what I do and for providing this laser. Expect to see this guy in a lot more videos coming up. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.